Turning overseas, where U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday in his meeting with the Palestinian Authority president this morning. This comes amid some of the deadliest violence in the region in years. MTS Tayyip is in Jerusalem. MTS, good morning. Good morning. Well, Secretary Blinken is currently meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas as part of efforts to, in his words, de-escalate the situation, a situation which was triggered by a massive Israeli raid in the occupied West Bank city of Jenin last week, where 10 Palestinians were killed. The following day, in what's been described as a, quote, revenge attack, a Palestinian gunman opened fire outside a synagogue in East Jerusalem, killing seven, including six Israelis. And since then, there's been more acts of violence carried out by Palestinians and more raids by Israeli forces in the West Bank, including at least 144 attacks by Israeli settlers against Palestinians there. Now, this surge in violence comes as Israel's new government, which is described as the most extreme and right-wing in the country's history, triggered mass protests over its plans to weaken the judiciary, a protest movement Blinken appeared to support when meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But apart from appeals for calm, Secretary Blinken hasn't set out any ideas on how to de-escalate the situation, nor was it clear whether he'd be offering any proposals. MTS tie-up for us once again in Jerusalem. MTS, thank you very much. To Pakistan now, where the death toll from a suicide bombing at a crowded mosque has now risen to at least 100. The attack happened inside a compound that also houses police and counterterrorism offices in the northwestern part of that country. And a hospital spokesman said that most of the casualties were members of Pakistani police. A commander for the Pakistani Taliban initially claimed responsibility through a spokesperson for the group, though a spokesperson for the group later said that attacking religious sites violates its policy and it wasn't them. Pakistan's prime minister called terrorism the country's, quote, foremost national security challenge. Russian forces in eastern Ukraine have launched a new assault with thousands of troops, according to British defense officials. The latest battle is on top of the continued fighting in the eastern city of Bakhmut, which has already been largely destroyed in months of attacks. Deborah Pata visited the front lines where Ukrainian forces are using everything they've got, including surveillance drones, to keep control of that city. Almost no civilians. For a place 70,000 people called home, Bakhmut is barely recognizable. Nearly a year of war has left the city, once renowned for sparkling wine, a hollowed-out shell. Bakhmut still holds as the Ukrainian battle cry, but only just. The sound of artillery is constant. This city has been decimated and it's deserted, barring a few people still trying to eke out some kind of living here. Even a trip to the central square is done with one eye on the clock, Let's go. the other on the sky. Cartier commander Sieva Kozimeko's battalion is helping to prevent Russia from seizing this city. Come on, come on. Much of that battle is directed in underground high-tech command centers like this, where soldiers use drones to live stream video from the front line, revealing it in astounding detail like this dead Russian soldier and shattered backyards where Russian troops were recently filmed crawling for cover. They are monitoring all the videos and as soon as they see the enemy there or the tanks or something else, they just start to shoot. World War I trench warfare meets 21st century electronic surveillance. Gains are counted in inches, with Russia throwing waves of soldiers like meat into the fight, we're told. They just keep on advancing over the bodies of their fallen soldiers, 3rd Operative Battalion Commander Anton Zadorozhny said. One group is destroyed, another sent in. The men work, sleep and eat here in shifts around the clock. No job too menial, making sure for now that on the blood-soaked battlefields just a few blocks away, Bakhmut still holds. For CBS Mornings, Deborah Pata, Bakhmut.